Hey y'all and welcome to the Get My Life Tour. It is me, your host, Lydia T. Blanco. And as always, I am so excited that you are here taking center stage with me on this stop of the Get My Life Tour. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the Get My Life Tour. Oh my goodness, you're here. Shout outs to you. And if this is your umpteen time tuning in, thank you for coming back. Thank you for being on tour with me. I love having you here. Oh, I am officially back on the East Coast, y'all. I am in Harlem. I am sitting in my newly redesigned, um, per me, okay, in my design skills, office space. I'm looking out the window. I don't know what someone is watching, but their TV is huge, okay? Like, I'm really back in New York. As some of you may know, I've been by coastal for like the last year, a little over a year now. I was one of those crazy people traveling during the pandemic and just really trying to figure it out. But, you know, one of the prayers that I was able to live out was to be by coastal, right? But to also just be safe and figure out so many things in the process. And I'm so glad that I'd been able to do so. You know, a lot of people have been inside. A lot of people have been places they don't want or prefer to be. And so I really consider it a blessing that I've been able to be on the West Coast with family, um, reconnecting with people, deepening my connections, strengthening my connections, and still be able to maintain what God has blessed me with here in Harlem. So I'm super grateful to be back here on the sixth floor of my walk-up. Ooh, (laughs) y'all. Things have been coming in the mail, and I'm like, what are we doing? Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, I'm bringing that upstairs? Oh, no, so no one's going to deliver to the sixth floor? Is this still a thing? No one cares? Okay, great. And so I'm back. All of that to say, I am back. This time around, I'm back, and I'm hopeful. You know how people will be like, I'm back with a vengeance? No, I'm back, and I am reclaiming my time. I am rethinking a lot of the ways that I do things, I'm reevaluating, I'm being, I'm doing, I'm learning. Oh my goodness. In the week that I've been back, so much has been put into perspective for me. And I'm like, whoa. And it's wild because this month actually makes six years since I've been in New York. And so I'm back. And what I want to share on the stop of the tour is the idea of creating home in your heart. You know, one of the questions that I get often is, what is it like being bi-coastal? And oh my goodness, it looks so glint. Like you are really doing it. And I'm like, oh, I really am doing it. <laughs> and oftentimes that's what it feels like. Okay, you doing it. Okay, right. Um, and so it, like I said, is a blessing But it has also been challenging at times. And so when I'm in California, you know, life is good. And I'm outdoors. I'm with family. I'm kayaking, roller skating backwards to some lit playlist, either like somewhere in San Francisco or in Napa or in Oakland. And that's what I'm used to, right? But... One of the things that I've been extremely intentional about while on the West Coast is redefining what home looks like. If you've tuned into the Get My Life Tour before, I have spoke, you know, to some length um, or spoke at length, let me be correct, right, about my experience with home and growing up. The episode is actually called Go Home, and I believe it's in season two of the Get My Life Tour. And so home has been a very interesting place or the idea of home, the, mm, I don't even want to say idea, but just home in general, right? Oftentimes people say home is where the heart is, but I like to play with that. And I, you know, believe that we should create home in our hearts, Right. That way, wherever we go, home will be. And so to get back on topic, 
I have been intentional while on the West Coast about making sure that I act like I'm home, okay? Because I felt displaced um, in a number of ways while on the West Coast. So that's something that I've been practicing and living out while on the West Coast. Now let's get to home on the East. Ooh, mm. home on the East, y'all. You know, you hear a lot of things about New York and whatever you hear is probably true. Okay. Take it from me. <laughs> it is, uh, I want to say all of what you heard and some. Okay. Plus tax. And, and you don't get to keep the change. And so I have literally been waging war against the negative thoughts and feelings that I associate with New York because the most high is at work, right? In my heart, in my life, and in my house, like in the physical property of my apartment. Y'all, I call my apartment my house, okay? It is what it is. And so I've been in here. I've been making room. I've been throwing things away. Y'all, if you've been here before, you know what I'm saying? You know that I love decluttering. Oh, I love it. I'm like, "Mm, there is nothing like organizing. And so for the last week, quite honestly, I have been doing such. I touched down last Sunday in the morning and I got to it. Okay. I was like, Hmm, this is good. Okay. I can do that. And even though I didn't begin to move things that day, I began to take inventory and noted what are the things that I need? What needs to go? What needs to be repositioned? Mm, Okay. Now I'm doing that in my apartment, but I'm also doing that in my heart. I'm doing that in my mind. And Honestly, the moment I began to have those thoughts and I'd been praying prior to my arrival, things began to shift. Things have begun to shift or begun to shift, excuse me, relationally. I can feel the shift, you know, in the atmosphere. And I'm just like, wow. Right. And so I offer the example of me making room in my apartment. But the reality is that it has also happened in the atmosphere divinely. And that is the power of creating home in your heart, right? And there's nothing easy about this. I wish I had 20 tips to give you, but I don't. And so speaking through experience, this is what I have been able to really experience, I guess I'll use that twice in one sentence, since being back. And so it was really weighing on me to share that because I've been having a lot of conversations with my girlfriends, with my family since I've been back. And I'm like, yo, I asked the most high to speak to me when I was making my way to New York And like I told my mom and sister earlier, I was like, okay, kind of loud. I need you to tone it down, right? With all due respect. But I'm like, wow, this is incredible. And so honestly, taking inventory, I say this all of the time, right? But it doesn't just pertain to physical things. It's also taking inventory about how you feel, doing those checkups from the neck up. Right. Like what's going on in my mind today? How am I really feeling? You know, there they have these like intake forms whenever you find like a new therapist and they're like, OK, so is it a smiley face? Is it a smirk? Are you like growling because you're such an uproar or are you sad? And I am like, hmm, I have to do that on a daily basis. Right. Not because I'm going through anything, but because it is so important to know where you are, be in tune with yourself. Right. So take inventory in that way. And so the next thing I would offer you is to practice gratitude. Okay, as you create home in your heart, be grateful for what you have. And also. 
Be grateful for the things that no longer serve you. When I made my way back to the East Coast, I began to look around in the family space that I was sharing with my mom and sister. And I was like, you know what? I don't need that. I don't need, mm. and you know what? And then I began to think about all the things that have been in New York since the pandemic. And I have not seen, I have not touched, I have not thought about, I could care less about. And I was like, hmm, well, it sounds like I'm about to be doing a lot of uh, decluttering because it doesn't serve me anymore. Like if it's out of sight and out of mind, it probably does not serve you. And it relates to that relates to relationships too, right? Sometimes we're trying to get somewhere because we think that someone is awaiting our arrival. And baby, okay, you've probably been out of sight and out of mind. And so that person no longer serves you and vice versa. Okay. So when I got back, I was like, wow. Looking around. Oh, no, I need to get rid of it. Okay, cool. Oh, this is actually what I need for functionality to make my life a bit easier. Um, okay, this serves me. When you pay attention to what you have or what you need to get rid of or what you've lost, I think it honestly will make you a bit more grateful as those things are put into perspective. There have been just so many things I'm like, wow, right? I'm so grateful to have my apartment in the midst of a pandemic and be able to go back and forth. I'm so grateful, okay, for Instacart. Hello, somebody. Shameless plug. You definitely can sponsor the MLI tour if you're interested. Um, <laughs> and Amazon Prime, like, I'm like, wow, I am so grateful that I have the resources to be able to hire where I'm not able to put my time or get things delivered at least to the front door, okay, or the third floor. And then I can skip out on carrying things for long distances, getting in cars and paying X amount of dollars on Uber and Lyft and at least be able to just carry things up my stairs, right? I'm so grateful for natural light in my apartment. I'm so grateful that, you know, I have a design eye or an eye for design right now. I'm not, um, I'm not one of your favorite influencers online. Okay. Let's just get that straight, but I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like when I put my effort, I'm like, oh my gosh. And I can like put things together and all such stuff. I'm, I'm super grateful y'all for my abilities to be handy. Your girl can build. All right. I would love to build a house with my um, hands, but one day, and I don't know how that's going to work with my acrylic overlay, but in all seriousness, like I'm so grateful that I can build. I got stuck on step two of building this desk and I was like, yo, why can't I get past that too? And I was like, you know, you need to take a breather, right? And fun fact, a stress food of mine is hot chips, like the heat and the crunch get me. But I will let you know I eat responsibly because I know it has a lot of bad chemicals and, you know, I'm, I, I'm aware. I'm, I'm trying to let them go, y'all. But I had to sit down and put like some hot chips on a napkin and just crunch and smack and do what I needed to do. And I was like, oh my goodness. I watched the YouTube video like four times, read the instructions again and again. Um, what are those things called? Cam locks. Those things are so hard to install in wooden products. But anyways, I'm grateful because I was able to get past step two. Now I'm sitting at the table um, or the desk that I built and I didn't have to pay anyone to do that. So little things like that. Right. And so I'm also grateful for the opportunity to partner with my therapist as I talk about creating 
home in my heart. I'm grateful for my loved ones, my family, my friends who I'm able to speak with, you know, frequently as I return back to home in New York. Um, the people that I'm just able to call on and just all the resources that I have, right? I'm also grateful for being resourceful. And so practicing gratitude will set you up for success, right? I really believe that at times we can't go anywhere and be satisfied because we don't practice gratitude, right? And so that's one of the things that we practice in my household, okay? Be it on the East Coast and the West Coast, wherever I travel to. You know, the other thing that I want to really highlight is that it is important to share what you know as you create home in your heart. You know, I, I've i visited so many um, people and I always take note of how they do things at home, right? Are you hospitable? Do you have a scent in your home? Are things organized? Are th- is your space tidy? You know, are there photos on the wall? Do you like to cook? Are things like where they just need to be. Are you a welcoming person? Do you cook for others when they come over? Do you have water waiting for them because you live on the six floor walk up? Yes, I do. Fun fact. Right. But just in general. And I say all this to say there is so much power in learning from others and paying attention to how other people do things in their home because there's an opportunity to not only learn, right, but adopt. I take note on everything. I take note on what I appreciate. I take note on what I cannot stand. I'm like, mm, let, me, let me make sure I don't do that, right? And it helps me to create a value system, right? Or add things to my value system, especially as it relates to the home. And so I really hope that's helpful. You know, I would encourage you to be mindful of the spaces that you enter, Right, be it a home, an apartment, studio apartment, someone's room if they're renting one, and just be mindful of how they do things and respect that as well. Right. And let me just stay on the respect part for a bit because some people don't have no coof. Okay. No class, no tack, like no value system, no morals, nothing. And you can see it in their living space. And so there's a lack of respect oftentimes when they enter other people's spaces, right? Um, and that lack of respect can look like judgment. It can look like negativity. It can look like someone not taking care of or being a good steward of someone else's properties or goods, honestly. Um, and yes, That is unfortunate, but I also want to be like, this is a cautionary tale. Don't be that person. Do not be that person. You know, when you are at home in your heart, you begin to show up places differently and you respect where people are. You respect what they have. You respect how they're able to organize. You respect their ingenuity. You know, you respect them being in transition or wherever they're, wherever it is on their process. And so I really think it's important to say that because over the last six years, my living space has looked a number of ways. Like there is one section in my home that has not changed much at all. Like the photos are up. If you made the wall, you made the wall, right? Um, and I'm like, okay, that has been a constant, but I've, oh, excuse me, I'm dropping stuff. I have really made it a point to be very open and unlearn the feelings of embarrassment associated with what I consider to be lack or challenge. So I'm like, hey, if you in my same weight class, come on up. If you, you know, we in the same, it doesn't matter is what I'm saying. Like, don't think of weight class and thinking like more so boxing. That was a bad reference uh, or analogy anyways, a metaphor. But right, I've practiced 
being very transparent, but here it is, being very welcoming and hospitable, no matter how much I've had or did not have. When you come to this place, okay, number one, you're going to get some water once you get to the top of the stairs, because I know it is not easy for everybody to climb six floors in this Harlem apartment where each landing, I think it's like about 80 some odd stairs to get to me, right? So I'm like, if you make it up here, you deserve it, okay? You can have whatever, except for me, okay? If you make it up here. Um, But you are going to be met with hospitality. You're going to be met with that glass of water I'm talking about, a hot drink, a scent, and tidiness, right? But you're going to be met with a warmth that permeates and radiates through me. And so be respectful. Um, And then I'm going to just go ahead and pivot, right? But yes, be hospitable. I said it, and I know somebody probably was rolling their eyes. They probably like, ooh, I know she did. Yes, I did. Kuth is so important. You have to be welcoming, you know? And so some of the things that I shared are also um, interchangeable as tips. I remember taking a home experience course, and I felt like trash when I was taking that class. It was a church um, provided women's group. And I was like, oh my goodness, I just graduated college. I returned back to the Bay Area. I'm back in the same room that I couldn't. I felt like I was in a room where, you know, yo, I'm not even gonna get into it, right? I just felt like I had no business learning about how to keep a home. But the most high was like, you have every spiritual right to nurture what I'm doing in you. So you're going to take this class. Okay. And I remember learning things, different etiquettes. I'm excited. I'm hitting the mic and dropping stuff. Y'all excuse me. And I'm so grateful for what I learned. One of the things is to have an aroma, right? Maybe you're not baking any goods, but you know, you have a nice candle going or you have some kind of aromatherapy, some kind of spritzer, something so that when people come into your space, it smells good, right? And then that should just be a habit, not should, excuse me. Don't let me, don't let me do that to you. That can be a, a, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just lost my thought because I told y'all what y'all shouldn't, we shouldn't be doing. I'm like, let me correct myself (laughs) in real time, right? But that can be something that you adopt, right? To have a scent in your home. Making sure that your space is tidy. It is so hard for me. I cannot have company with a dirty house. Like you will not come to my house when it is not clean. That's out. Um, And so I am a very tidy person. Sometimes if it can be a little, you know, overbearing. And just being able to do those things routinely and first and foremost for yourself will set a nice precedence for when you have company, right? It's hard to commune with others when you have not created the space for that, be it spiritually, physically, emotionally, and it creates a blockage. You know, I'm very particular about who I allow to come in my home as well. And honestly, that could be another point, right? Be mindful of the company you keep. Everybody does not get to enter the home that you've created in your heart or your physical property, regardless if you're renting or, you know what I'm saying, you own your property. Everybody should not be in and out. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I'm not telling you (laughs) who those people are, but you know better. People have energy and it's a very real thing. People have other things that they carry and it's like, whoa, you don't want that in your house. Okay. I know some people sage and have other rituals that they, you know, practice, but you really have to be careful of who you let inside of your home, who you allow to enter the home in your heart. Because sometimes we take that company with us. We can't shake certain things or we show up in other spaces. And then there are people who we come across who remind us of other people. And then we fall into bad habit, 
or we limit ourselves because we think we've experienced these people before. And it's like, nah, that's you. That's what you're carrying. Who, who is, uh, taking up who you letting live in your heart? Okay. Who not paying rent? It's out. Not in this season. Okay. The last thing that I'd like to leave you with is this create the rules for your home. Sometimes people have them listed out, right? <laughs> One of the rules in my house and my physical property is no shoes. Oh, no, 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 no. I will legit take off my shoes each and every time. Or if I have to crawl, I will. But no shoes, right? Not only is outside just dirty beyond a pandemic like New York. Uh-uh. Like if you're wearing your shoes in a house in New York, I am low-key, mid-key most likely judging you. I'm like, uh uh-uh. No, 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 no. Right. But I really think that we should have like these, these standards, like this guideline, essentially boundaries for our homes, be it physically or in our hearts. You know, number one, everybody can't come over, right? No shoes in the house. You ain't going to walk all over me, okay? Um, but also, like, whatever it is that will keep you at peace. I don't know what those things are for you specifically. But there just are some things you should not invite into your heart space. And there are some people. Uh, maybe there is some, way or some places you shouldn't set up shop, right? Because you have to really guard Guard everything within you at your core. All right, it's officially time for me to drop the mic. And what honestly is on my heart is if your heart is not there, it's probably time to start packing. Yes, home is where the heart is, but sometimes we don't even realize that we're at the wrong address or it's just time to go. Look, I really hope that this has been helpful for someone. I'm learning. I'm growing. I am unraveling. I'm coming back together. I'm coming home to myself. And I really wanted to share this because so many of us are here. And so I really hope this is what you've needed. As always, to stay connected with me, um, here on the Get My Life Tour, visit the Get My Life Tour dot com at the Get My Life Tour on all social platforms at Get My Life Tour on Twitter. And if you'd like to stay connected with my work journalistically as I tell stories or just, you know, if you're interested in my lifestyle, be sure to visit LydiaTBlanco dot com or stay connected on Twitter or Instagram at Lydia T. Blanco. I am so glad that you've taken center stage and that you have shown up. And like I said, I hope that you've gotten what you needed. Until the next time, be kind to yourself. It has been real. Peace. (laughs) 